Movie posters. We all love movie posters. We get excited when we see one of our anticipated movies get a cool poster art. We all decorate our rooms with a few of our favorite movie posters. In short, posters are a part of the cinephile culture. Unfortunately though, we can observe the decline in the art of movie posters nowadays. Movie posters are becoming way less imaginative and creative, and studios are paying less and less attention to them since posters are not the big attention jars anymore as they used to be. Prior to 1910, movie posters were just signs which you could see in front of the movie theaters that would just have blocked text announcing the title of the film and the name of the director and producer. As time passed, studios evolved their poster arts and the movie posters went from just being a piece of non-expensive paper that would go from one theater to another for display for some time and then get returned to the studio to becoming a crucial part of movies advertisement. Nowadays, we have the holy internet where we can find all sorts of information about upcoming movies, plot synopsis, teasers and trailers, news about the movie's production and etc. But before the internet, getting all sorts of details about a movie was not as easy and accessible as it is today. Of course, there were trailers, news and other forms of advertisements, but it is incomparable to the scale of what we can find on the internet, and thus movie posters were quite an important selling point. A big, colorful, exciting poster could easily draw people's attention and get them interested in the film. That's why we have so many amazing and iconic posters from the past, like Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Silence of the Lambs, The Thing, The Exorcist, Apocalypse Now, Halloween, Back to the Future, E.T., Alien, and so many more. It is impossible to think about Jaws without immediately picturing the iconic poster in your mind. It is a simple yet effective poster that perfectly depicts what the movie is about and what to expect from it. But cut back to the present time and we can see how most movie posters now are lazily done with little effort and finding an imaginative interesting poster has become a bit of a challenge. But I want to get to the point that triggered me into making this video, and that is this ugly, overly used pattern in modern posters, and especially it is often used for big blockbusters. I am talking about this pattern, where we usually have an important character situated in the middle of the poster and then a bunch of other characters depicted on different sides. The size of the depicted character depends on how important the character is to the story. I did put Force Awakens poster as an example for this pattern, although I don't hate the usage of this pattern on this particular movie, and in fact sometimes this pattern is suitable for a movie. A good example of this would be posters for Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. In this case, a big selling point for both of these films is all these MCU characters coming together in one big story to destroy their mutual enemy, and so this pattern works perfectly to depict that. The poster sells us this idea of all these Marvel characters in one movie, and the movie gives us exactly that. But unfortunately though, this pattern often is used just because they just slap the characters from the movie into the poster and here you go. It just comes off as lazy and it definitely is the case, laziness. I mean, why bother, right? Where we can just use this pattern for the hundredth time. We don't have to look too far into the past. Let's just remember the ugliness Disney presented us with poster for Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh boy, just just look at that. They didn't even try. It looks so lazy, boring, ugly, and unappealing that frankly, it is kind of mind-blowing how they messed this up so badly. I mean, how can you mess up a poster for a character so colorful and fun like Spider-Man? Honestly, the first teaser poster was way better. They should have just kept that. But this is not the only bad one from MCU Spider-Man movies, believe it or not. <laughs> There's also this poster for Homecoming. Oh, would you look at this beauty. 
So we have New York City as the background. Uh huh. Good. And we can see the big image of Spider Man. You know, he is the lead. And then we have Tony Stark. Of course, he was important in Homecoming. And in the bottom right corner, we can see little Happy and Aunt May. You know, Aunt May was not as important in that movie. You know, I mean, who cares about Aunt May, right? I mean, not like she has always been an important person in Peter's life. <clears throat> I'm getting a bit sidetracked, but yes, you get the gist. This pattern is beloved by Disney for some reason. You can see it in a lot of MCU films like Ant-Man and the Wasp, and also you can see it in their live-action Disney movies like Aladdin. I honestly think that there's this one guy who does posters for all of Disney's films and doesn't really bother with them too much, but Disney is not the only one committing this crime. Let's remember the poster for Terminator Dark Fate. Oh, what? You can't remember it? Yeah, well, I don't blame you. It looks like the most boring shit you have ever seen in your entire life. Literally, what does this poster tell you? Absolutely nothing. It literally just tells you that these characters are in the movie. And that's it. They didn't even try whatsoever. Oh, or maybe the artist saw the movie and thought, well, I better make this poster as unappealing and lazy as possible to warn the viewers about this shit movie. Well, in that case, it makes sense actually. Whether it is a pattern like an endgame or it is something like Far From Home, just having a medley of characters in the poster is what you'll see in so many movie posters of recent years. I get it, studios know that having a great poster is not the most important thing to sell the movie, and they're technically right. People decide what to watch based on plot synopsis, trailers, and friend suggestions. And if you go to the movie theaters without knowing what kind of movies they are showing right now, you can just use the display screens in theaters to browse through what they have, or just check out their website. No one will just decide to watch something solely based on the poster, however, posters still have a fun Function that I want to point out by giving you an example from my own experiences. Sometimes when I'm browsing through a website or any movie page, if I stumble upon a movie poster that catches my eye and seems interesting, I will google the movie and see what it is about, and then if it's interesting, add it to my watch list. For example, last year while scrolling through a movie site, I stumbled upon Color Out of Space, and its interesting vibrant looking poster immediately caught my eye, and so naturally, I googled it and then planned to watch it and um, still haven't done that, but hey, it has nothing to do with the movie itself. I just always watch things spontaneously regardless of lists I make. In another instance, not too long ago, a friend of mine recommended me a movie called A Scene at the Sea and said that it was this pleasant, relaxing movie. So I searched it up and when I saw the posters on Google search results, I immediately knew that I wanted to watch it since the posters as well gave that peaceful, meditative feeling that the movie itself has. And by the way, I did watch the movie and even review it on this channel. So as you can see, despite the fact that posters are not the main reason we choose to watch something, it can easily give someone a push to look up a movie they previously did not know about. To give you an analogy, if you are in a grocery store and trying to decide between two products you have never tried before, you are most likely going to pick the one with better packaging. I mean, of course, there are other factors like brands and prices too, but a good package still can lure you in and make you believe that this is a good product or give you a push to at least try it once. And in the essence, a poster is kind of like the packaging of a film. A good poster should tell you something about the film, maybe about its concept, its idea, or just give you a feeling that the movie is going for. But I don't want to conclude this video by saying old is good and new is bad. There are still some great posters that have come out in recent years, like these two alternative posters for Split. Just look at these beauties. Not only do they look cool, but also perfectly represent the movie's concept. Some other great posters from past few years are Logan, Parasite, John Wick 2, and The Handmaiden. I want to briefly talk about The Handmaiden's poster, but I will touch upon spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, skip to this timestamp. When you look at this poster for a brief moment, at first it seems like a generic poster with the main characters on it, but when you look at it again, you start to notice the subtle details which here are the hands. The hands of each character in this poster represents their position in the movie. As seen here, the uncle has his hand placed on Lady Hitako's head, 
which shows his control over her. The same can be seen with Count Fujiwara, whose one hand is gripping Hisuk's neck, once again representing his full control over her and her actions, and his other hand placed on Lady Hitoko's shoulder, which shows his interest and a bit of control over her as well. Lady Hitoko and Hisuk, however, are holding hands, which represents their strong love for each other, regardless of outside influence. The Handmaiden's poster is a perfect example of the fact that you don't need insane visuals for your poster to be a great one. It can be a very simple one too, and as long as it has subtle details like that, it will be a memorable and a beloved poster. In conclusion, Hollywood, please stop using the same goddamn template for every movie poster. <sighs> please. And most importantly, every digital artist in the world, take notes to never ever create anything like this atrocity.